In the close-knit Orinda community in California, Carl Herbert Landers was more than just a resident. He was an inspirational figure, especially at the age of 69, where his passion for outdoor adventures far surpassed those of many younger individuals. His zeal for mountaineering transcended mere hobby status, evolving into a personal mission that led him to the base of the majestic Mount Shasta, a mountain as renowned for its breathtaking landscapes as it is shrouded in enigmatic lore. In 1999, the year Carl went missing, he was not only deeply embedded in the fabric of Orinda's outdoor community, but was also in pursuit of a formidable challenge he has set for himself, to climb the highest peak in every county across California. Despite his advanced age, Carl was in exemplary health, a testament to his active lifestyle filled with hiking and climbing endeavors. However, his profound experience and thorough preparation could not foretell the mystery that awaited him on Mount Shasta. As he embarked on his journey to conquer yet another peak, he vanished without a trace, leaving no clues behind. Despite the exhaustive efforts to uncover any signs of his whereabouts, turning his ambitious quest into a lingering mystery amidst the mountain's silent watch. Welcome to As Told by Bells, where mysteries unfold, the bizarre becomes reality, and strange stories come to life. I'm Bells, your guide into the world of the unexplained. Each week, we'll delve into unsolved mysteries that continue to baffle and tell so bizarre you won't believe they happened. To stay in the loop with every captivating story, make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and ring that notification bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss a single episode of these extraordinary stories we're about to unravel. Now let the storytelling begin. In late May of 1999, Carl Landers, alongside his two dependable friends, Milton Milt Gaines and Barry Gilmore, embarked on a journey to summit Mount Shasta. Milt, a close friend of Carl's, shared his enthusiasm for the great outdoors with a particular fondness for hiking and climbing. Their mutual membership in the Orinda Roadrunners Club highlighted their collective passion for physical fitness and the natural world. As an experienced adventurer, Milt's involvement in the Mount Shasta climb demonstrated his familiarity with the rigors of mountaineering, and at 64, his expertise was well established. Barry, another member of Carl's close-knit group, also exhibited a deep-seated passion for outdoor pursuits. His decision to tackle the formidable Mount Shasta indicated his seasoned status as an outdoorsman. Like Milt, Barry's participation in the climb at the age of 60 underscored his proficiency in hiking and potentially more advanced mountaineering. United by their shared affection for outdoor adventures and as a member of the same local running club, the trio were not just friends but seasoned hikers, each boasting a substantial repertoire of climbs. However, for Carl, Mount Shasta represented more than just another peak. It was a personal challenge, a goal that had previously slipped from his grasp, now driven him with renewed resolve to conquer its heights. The journey began under a clear sky with the towering presence of Mount Shasta looming ahead. The plan was straightforward. Ascend to a base camp near Lake Helen, acclimatize, and then push for the summit. Carr's preparation was meticulous, from his rust-colored coat to his well-equipped backpack, containing essentials for the climb and survival. However, beneath his robust exterior, Carl was battling not just the mountain, but his own body. He had fallen unwell, a fact he disclosed to Milt and Barry, but his determination overshadowed his physical discomfort. As they trekked toward Lake Helen, the altitude began to take its toll on Carl. The symptoms of altitude sickness, exacerbated by a medication he was taking, Diamox, began to manifest. His steps became labored, his breaths shallow, and frequent stops became necessary. Concerned, Milt and Barry offered support, 
shouldering his backpack and encouraging rest. Yet Carl, ever so stoic, pressed on, fueled by a resolve that seemed to defy his physical limits. Finally, they made it to 50-50. So the term 50-50 on Mount Shasta refers to a specific campsite located on the mountain, often used by climbers as a staging area or rest point during their ascent. It's not an official campsite, but rather a common term used by climbers to describe this location due to its approximate halfway point on some of the other popular climbing routes, particularly the Avalanche Gulch Route, which is one of the most important frequented paths to reach the summit of Mount Shasta. The 50-50 name implies a point where climbers often make a critical decision based on their condition, the weather, and other factors whether to proceed toward the summit or turn back. This site is positioned at an elevation where the effects of altitude can become more pronounced, making it a crucial stop for climbers to assess their readiness to continue the climb. Climbers often use this site to acclimatize to the altitude, rest, and prepare for more challenging segments of the ascent ahead. It provides a relatively flat area where tents can be set up, though it's exposed and can be windy, making it essential for climbers to be well prepared for cold temperatures and changing weather conditions. The evening at the base camp close to Lake Helen was fraught with relentlessness for Carl. Outside their tent, the menacing howls of the wind seemed to signal the impending chaos of their mountain climb adventure. Come dawn, Carl's well-being showed no signs of improvement. Yet his resolve to press on remained unshaken. He was already geared up and prepared to ascend while Milt and Barry were still occupied with dismantling their tent. Acknowledging Carl's steadfastness, albeit with concern, they suggested he proceed, assuring him they would swiftly follow. Thus, they observed as Carl, eager not to postpone the ascent, advanced solo toward the peak's direction. The hours that followed were fraught with tension. Milton Barry, breaking camp, followed Carl's solitary tracks in the snow, an eerie silence enveloping the mountain. The usual camaraderie shared by the trio was replaced by an unsettling solitude, as if the mountain itself had cast a spell of isolation over them. As Milton Barry approached Lake Helen, the trace of Carl's presence abruptly ended. The once scenic environment morphed into a challenging maze of snow and rock, erasing any signs of their companion. The growing panic became palpable as their calls for Carl dissipated into the mountain's immensity. Adding to the mystery, Lake Helen is clearly visible from the 50-50 area, offering expansive views where visibility stretches to the horizon, leaving few places to hide, especially in Carl's vivid jacket. Compounded by Carl's weakened state that morning, which slowed his pace, it seemed inconceivable that he could have moved out of sight of Milt and Barry. It was as if he had simply vanished into thin air. The search for Carl became a race against time and nature. Rescue teams were summoned, combing the mountain with a fine-tooth comb. Yet Mount Shasta, shrouded in its own mysteries, yielded no clues. Carl had vanished leaving behind only questions and the echo of his last known steps near Lake Helen. In the days and weeks that followed, theories abounded. Some spoke of the mountain's supernatural allure, others of a tragic misstep that led Carl off the known path. Yet the mountain kept its secrets, with Carl's fate becoming a part of Mount Shasta's lore. The disappearance of Carl Landers on Mount Shasta had spawned various theories, ranging from the plausible to the speculative and even into the realm of the supernatural. These are just some of the theories that have been proposed to explain his mysterious vanishing. Natural Causes One of the most grounded theories is that Carl succumbed to natural causes. He was not feeling well before he separated from his group, possibly due to altitude sickness, which can be exacerbated by exertion and lack of acclimatization. It's possible he could have become disoriented, collapsed, and succumbed to the elements, or a medical issue like a heart attack or stroke. Injury or accident. The rugged terrain of Mount Shasta poses numerous hazards. Carl could have suffered an accident. 
such as a fall leading to severe injury or death. If he fell into a crevasse or a similarly concealed area, this might explain why his body was never found. Environmental disorientation. Mount Shasta's weather can be unpredictable and harsh, contributing to environmental disorientation. If car became disoriented due to weather conditions, fatigue, or altitude sickness, he could have wandered off the established path, making it difficult for search teams to locate him. Supernatural theories. Mount Shasta is surrounded by folklore and has been considered a sacred and mystical place. Some supernatural theories suggest that Carl might have experienced a paranormal event linked to the legend of the mountain, such as entering a different dimension or encountering beings associated with the mountain's lore. Voluntary disappearance. While there is no evidence to support this theory, some cases of missing persons turn out to be voluntary disappearances. However, given Carl's age, his lack of preparation for an extended disappearance, and his known intention to summit the mountain, this theory is less likely. Wildlife encounter. While less likely given the terrain and typical wildlife of the area, Carl could have had an encounter with a wild animal, leading to a fatal outcome. However, such incidents are rare, and the likelihood of no traces being found is low. Hypothermia and confusion. Hypothermia can cause confusion and erratic behavior. If Carl became hypothermic, he might have removed his clothing, a phenomenon known as paradoxical undressing, and wandered off, which could explain why no trace of him was found. In the absence of concrete evidence, the disappearance of Carl Landers remains one of the many mysteries associated with Mount Shasta. Each theory has its proponents, but without new information or discoveries, his fate remains an open question, leaving room for both rational explanation and more speculative conjectures. The disappearance of Carl Landers remains a poignant reminder of nature's indifferent majesty and the thin veil between adventure and misadventure. His story, woven into the tapestry of Mount Shasta's history, serves as a testament to the human spirit's yearning to conquer the unconquerable, even in the face of insurmountable odds. As seasons change and years pass, the legend of Carl Landers continued to echo in the hearts of those who knew him and in the whispering winds of Mount Shasta. His legacy, a blend of inspiration and caution, endures a poignant narrative of one man's final journey into the unknown embrace of a mountain that whispers but never speaks. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the mysteries of the unexplained. Remember to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on every captivating story we uncover. Until next time, keep your eyes open and your mind curious. Stay tuned for more stories from As Told by Bells.